This is a zero backlash Angular gearbox. There's no bevel or high point gears, it's not a one drive, it has no cables and belts, it can work at almost any angle, and I spent over six months figuring out this design. Before we dive in, I want to be clear that I'm not a professional mechanical engineer. My background actually is in software engineering. Mechatronics is just a hobby that I do in my free time and I really enjoy it. So if I got something wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. Just don't roast too hard. I'm here to learn too. Sometimes you need to transfer torque at an angle. It's useful, for example, in robotic arms if you want to move heavy motors away from the end effector. This helps balance the elbow axis and improve the payload capacity and speed. The most common are bevel gears, but they are not super precise. Belts are quiet and simple, but they can handle much torque and don't like being twisted over short distances. Hope you've seen my video about this inverted belt differential drive. Cables are awesome, snappy and smooth, but they are kind of a hassle when it comes to eroding and tensioning, plus they have limited rotation. I'm sure there are plenty of other solutions out there, and I think I found one more. One day I saw a rack and roller pinion system used in a linear drive. It's very precise and efficient thanks to the rack special trochoidal disc design, which lets the rollers engage at just right angle and roll smoothly without slipping. At any moment, at least two rollers are in contact, so you get precise torque transmission without backlash. That got me thinking, what if I could make an angular drive with it? I get curious and started digging into some papers trying to figure out how to build this profile. The tricky part was to make this linear profile work at an angle. My first prototype was based on a bevel gear design. It felt like the most obvious approach at that time, with a conical pinion, and the crown gear. Actually, it was working very well and smooth without any backlash. But there's a problem. It has the conical rollers which are hard to make and if you 3D print them, you'll always get a seam bump. Plus, there's a plastic on plastic contact which isn't great. I wanted a simple solution with straight metal rollers instead. So I designed a crown gear for a conical pinion with these rollers. But I kept thinking, is it possible to make a tooth profile that works with a straight pinion? It didn't feel right at first, and to be honest, I couldn't figure out the tooth shape with math. So I brute forced it to verify the idea. And it worked. I was so happy, I thought I had invented something new. I even started thinking maybe I should file a patent. But after a bit of research, I found that it was already patented. So yeah, I came back down to earth real quick. Now I'm not even sure if I can share the SCL files. Maybe someone can help me in the comments. This version has a pretty simple pinion, but the crown gear ends up with a complex tooth shape that changes across its surface. So when a roller with a constant diameter moves along that profile, it travels on even distances at different speeds, which can cause friction or slippage. There are two ways to fix it. Get back to my first version with conical rollers. Since the roller diameter changes with the tooth shape, the problem doesn't happen there. Or we can add multiple bearings in each roller so they can spin independently, kind of like a roller kebab. In this example, I'm using several brass bushings this one is a 45 degree variant, by the way. Then I kept experimenting and built this wrist differential. It uses an 8 roller pinion and two crown gears on the side, with 1 to 1 ratio between them. I've embedded a tiny 8 to 1 reducer inside each bearing block. To 
drive this differential, I made this over-engineered double hollow shaft forearm as a demo. I think I'll make a separate assembly video of this wrist. I used two roller pinions and coaxial shafts with shifted crown gears to transfer torque without bending any belts. That gave me an extra 2 to 1 reduction, so in the end each axis has total 16 to 1 reduction. I'm also working on a version without belts, so I can take advantage of using odd angles for more compact and lightweight design. Then I ran a quick torque test and pushed it to 9 Nm, that the maximum what a tiny reducer can handle. The square hole couldn't take it and gave out. To my surprise, the angle drive held up really well. The crown gear had no visible dents or deformation at all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my Instagram where I share some quick updates. Thanks for watching.